Hi everyone, this is Fede, and in this video we're going to learn how to use keyboard events in Play. I have this simple signing form here that has a name and an email. When I tap on it, it's going to show me the keyboard, but unfortunately, now the continue button is not visible and tapping on the email field is really hard because the keyboard is on top of it. Luckily, Play allows you to detect when the keyboard shows and hides. I'm going to select my page. I'm going to go into interaction mode by pressing four on my keyboard. I'm going to now press the letter A to the quick add panel, and then I'm going to search for keyboard. This is going to show me this trigger event device, and this has two things. It has one for keyboard shows and then another one for keyboard hides. So what I want in this case is to move this container vertically a little bit to the top so it doesn't collapse with the keyboard. In order to do that, I need to add an action so I'm going to search for offset Y, which means I'm going to move that object vertically. I'm going to set the target to be this container that I have here. And then I'm going to set the value to be minus 148. And I'm using a negative value because I'm moving this to the top. If I were going to move this to the bottom, then I would use a positive value. And then I can just turn on animate and then change the easing to be a spring animation. So it has a little bit of bounce and it feels more natural. Okay, now if I tap, it's going to move that car accordingly, but the problem is when I dismiss the keyboard, it's not going to go back to the original position. So in order to do this, we're going to select this trigger that was on keyboard heights. I'm going to just duplicate this action, and then I'm going to drag it into this trigger, and then in the value, instead of being minus 148, is going to be zero. So it's back to the original offset. I'm going to tap on name, it's going to move the container up, and then I'm going to dismiss the keyboard, and it's going to go back to the original position. It's going to work also for email. So this is kind of like universal. So for like every text field that you have in this page, it's going to work and behave the same way. Now we can do this a little bit more intelligent. For example, I'm going to go to the original action and then here, instead of using a hard value or a fixed value, we're going to use expressions. So for example, I can type plus, it's going to open up the expression editor. And then here I can search for my object, the container dot height. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to always base the movement on the height of this container. What I can do now is for example, divide by minus three. And this is because, as I said, we're moving the object to the top, so we need a negative value. And then by doing this, it's going to have the same movement. It's going to revert back to the original position, but now it's going to be based on the height of the object. So if you change your design, you make it taller or shorter, the movement is going to always adapt. And that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.